The Only Road, Chapter 18 The train heading to Suilar Juarez came later that afternoon. Jaime shifted his weight from one foot to another as he crouched near the tracks. He'd never gotten on a moving train before. He'd never gotten on any moving vehicle. Scenarios filled his head. The worst, of course, he could trip and get swallowed by the train. He could trip and have the train bite off his arms or legs. He could trip and get left behind. They weren't just horror stories. They were events that happened to real people he'd met. The legless man under the bridge in Lecheria, the papa of a classmate back home, the man whose sneakered foot lay along the tracks some 10 kilometers away. He tightened the straps of his backpack where Angela offered him some edible leaves. He turned them down. He wasn't even hungry. He wasn't hungry even though they'd barely eaten that day. Their train came around the bend as Joaquin did, except this as Joaquin's did, except this one had a gray engine instead of a black one. He could see people already on board, lying on their stomachs with their arms outstretched to help the newcomers. Jaime took a deep breath, wishing he had gone to the bathroom in the bushes one more time. Angela glanced his way, and he saw she was just as nervous as he was. She tightened her shoulder straps as well. Somehow, that made him feel a bit better, like he wasn't weak for being, for being sh scared. I can help you to get on, lift you to the ladder like I did Joaquin, Zavi offered. They shook their heads no, though Joaquin wished Angela had accepted the older boy's help. Other people, mostly boys older than Jaime, walked up and down the tracks as well. Some looked nervous, some calculating, some as if they didn't care anymore, but knew they had to keep going anyway. Instead of appearing scared, Zavi looked determined. Across his chest, he carried Vida in her double sling. She didn't fidget, just watched the train approach with her one ear cocked. Yeah, Zavi yelled over the train, the engine's roar. They burst into a sprint alongside the train. Jaime glanced over his shoulder at the oncoming cars, being careful not to trip. The first ladder he noticed was on a tank car with a rounded top. It would be near impossible to get to the top and kept his bal and keep his balance. The next car was a hopper that didn't have any top. No way of knowing how high its contents reached the sides. A box car came next with a ladder on either end. He glanced at Angela. This was it. The tracks were slightly raised and the ladder started just above his head. He half jumped, half lunged for the lowest rung. The momentum jerked his shoulders, jerked his shoulder muscles, but he clung tightly, his legs dangling dangerously close to the wheels. I have to get up, he thought. He swung his legs and managed to get his inside heel on the same rung as his hands. Now he dangled from two arms and a leg. Getting the rest of his body up seemed impossible, but so did hanging on that way for more than a few seconds. With a heaving grunt, he pushed up against the heel of his shoe and raised his bottom up, one arm clutching the ladder rung against his breastbone for dear life. He reached for the next rung up now that he was able to put both feet on the bottom rung. His hands shifted up, against, up again to grab the next rung and then the next. He kept climbing until he reached the top and there was nothing left to climb or hold. A boy leaped over to help him, but by that time Jaime had made it on his own. He lay flat on top of the boxcar, his arms spread out as if he were hugging it. His head lifted and behind two boys standing near him, he saw Angela doing the same thing on the other end of the car. On the next boxcar stood Javi, on the next boxcar over, Javi stood with Vila at his feet as if being on top of a moving train were no different than being on the ground. They had boarded the train.